Hi, welcome back to your math lesson. Okay, now we're going to do a very, very useful thing. It's called determining the compound period. We're still doing mathematics, financial mathematics. And uh, what I am, of course, referring to is I need to calculate how long do I need to invest a certain amount or how, how many um, installments do I need to reach a certain value. Or if I am paying a certain amount to pay off a loan, how many installments will I pay in total? In other words, I'm actually trying to calculate N in these formulas. Calculating N in the formulas A is equal to P1 plus or minus I to the power of N. In the future value formula, I'm trying to work out N where it is... 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 divided by i, or in the present value. And that's typical of the, the question, how many installments do I need to make to pay off a loan if I am paying x amount over um, a certain interest rate? And what you will notice each and every time is that my n appears in the exponent. I need to solve an exponential equation. And the reason why we are only able to do this now after so many years of schooling is because we've only recently learned using logs that if I wanted to solve x, I can use logarithms by taking a log on both sides I can find the x multiplies to the front and I actually managed to get my unknown out of the exponent and if I then just divide both sides with this log of a I see I've solved for x so x is equal to log of y divided by log of a and in general you will see this response that when I have a base let's call it B with an exponent E and an answer A that E will solve to the log of the answer divided by the log of the base okay if you want to why not use this, that uh, that concept okay but let's look at very typical examples that we find in this genre. Here's a very typical example too. 20,000 Rand is invested into an account paying 8% per annum compounded monthly. In how many years um, will it be worth 40,000 Rand? Okay, so we see that this is not a recurring investment. Since we simply have 20,000 Rand that is invested into an account paying 8% per annum compounded monthly. So the, the, the interest is compounded monthly, the 20,000 Rand is not invested monthly. It's only the interest that's compounded monthly. In how many years will it be worth 40,000? So now I must decide which formula to use and it's simply my uh, compound growth formula where my future value is equal to 40,000 my initial, my present value is equal to 20,000 my interest and again remember interest is added per month so I must use monthly interest which is 8% um, divided by 12 so since it's the same time also divide by 100 8, percent, 8 divided by 1200 and n being my time um, period in this case represents how many times will I earn interest well that's what I want to find out how many times will I earn interest before it gets to 40,000 rand okay. substituting all of that into my equation I then get 40,000 is equal to 20,000 1 plus 8 over 1200 to the power of n. Don't know what n is. And I am trying to solve for n. And to do so, I see that 
I want this format. I want a base exponent and an answer. A base exponent equal to an answer. And at this point, I have a base, this bracket, but in front of this base, I've got a coefficient. So let's just divide away the coefficient on both sides. After we've done that, I just want you to notice something very interesting. That now I have left 1 plus 8 over 1200. This portion here is called the growth factor. It is the, um, the factor that determines its growth or by, by what factor it should grow. And on the other side, 20,000 divided into 40,000 is two times. So we see that we want the growth factor to be equal to 2. Now that makes sense. I'm asking how long will it take for 20,000 to equal uh, to grow to 40,000? Which means I want the growth factor to be 2. I want it to double. Which means it doesn't matter how much I invest. I could have invested a million rand and asked the question how long will it be to um, take to equal 2 million rand? And the answer would be exactly the same. So I'm literally asking how long will it take for this investment to double. And it doesn't matter how much is invested. The period it will take to double is the same. So they do not have to give you an initial amount and a future amount. Okay, but in this question we can now go on. We have a base exponent and answer and I told you that then you can just um, solve it by taking the log on both sides. So let me let me do it the long way around from now at least. I take a log on both sides. The n gets multiplied to the front using my log laws. And then dividing with the log of that bracket on both sides is going to give me my answer. And let's see what it is. So n is equal to, I'm uh, definitely going to use your calculator to solve this question, it's, uh, these questions always. So I've got 2 log is divided by, and then in brackets I've got 1 plus Eight over twelve hundred log, and that gives me an answer of one hundred four comma three two. One hundred four comma three two. What is that in years? No, no, no. Remember, n represent the number of times I'm going to get interest. I get interest monthly. So this is in months. This answer is in months, so 104 months. If I divide it by 12, then I get, if I divide it into 12, 12 goes 8,69 times, so 8 months, so 8 years. Let me just see, 8 times 12, 8, 8 times 12 gives me 96. So 96 will leave me with another 8 months remaining. So 8 months would have been nine, uh, 8 years would have been 96 months. But in total I had 104 months, so I have 8 months remaining. Okay, let's look at one more example. Right here, yeah, a certain vehicle depreciates at 27% per annum on the reducing balance method. How long will it take to reduce to half of its value? Okay, Here, they didn't give us any amounts and it's at this point where students freak out. How can they not give me a value? Well, I just showed you in this, in this answer they didn't need to. I want my growth factor to be a half. In other words, and, and, and let me just show you, so even if you didn't get that, they say, okay, they didn't give me a value, so let's say, 
and my future value must be half of my present value. So my future value must be half of my present value. So present value is just P. My uh, depreciation rate in this case is 27%, so 27 over 100. And my time period is what I'm looking for. So substituting all of this in, I get, okay, A is equal to P, 1 minus I, that is what I mean, what we mean by the reducing balance method, is 1 minus I to the power of N, where A is half of P. So it doesn't matter what P is, and you're going to see, and probably some of you already do see that, in that term. that now if I divide, bo divide both sides with the P so I can have my base and exponent on their own, then those, the P's cancel completely. The P is not an, uh, a nece necessity. So I get 0, uh, what is that? 7, 3 to the power of N must be equal to a half. So once again we see that my um, growth factor in this case, my reducing factor, my reducing factor must be equal to a half. I want to multiply my initial value with a half to get my future value and that's, that's what I'm asking. When will that factor be equal to a half? And again, I, I, I showed you right at the beginning that that your exponent is log of your answer divided by log of your base. So if you want to remember that, that might just help you do, do it quickly. So n is log of your answer, log of a half, divided by log of the base, 0, 0,73. But please don't go and remember that. Okay, if you can, great. If you can't, then just use your logs. And using our calculator, we've got 0.5 log divided by 0.27 log, and I get an answer of 0.5 log divided by 0.73 log, not 0.27, 0.73 log. There I get. 2,2 years. So n is 2,2 years. Now here's just something a little interesting. What is that? Does that mean uh, 2 years and 2 months? No. No, it's actually 2,20. That 2,0 represents percentage. And the, the, the next two digits represent percentage because it's 100. It's over 100. Percentage. So it's two years and 20% of a year. Now, if a year is 12 months, then 20% of 12 months will equal 20% means divide by 100, odd means multiply. 12 will give you 22,4 months. So it's two years, two months, and now that. 2,4 months would you, again be this would be 40% of what do months consist of or either weeks or days so 40% of let's say 30 days so if I wanted to this is purely intrasate you never have to do that you can just say 2.2 years I'm, I just love doing this this is just fun for me okay so 40% of 30 days would give me um, 40 over 100 times 30 and that would give me 12 days so if I were so accurate I would say it will take 2 years, 2 months and 12 days for this car to depreciate to half of its value ok